in this tutorial we'll talk about georeferencing a scanned image that is you have an image that you scanned for example from a map or maybe you got a satellite image which uh, is not an arc map file and it does not know where different points are in terms of location or georeference so in order to do that we will create georeferencing so first of all link to your uh, lab for data folder and open the lab for data folder so that uh, you will see uh, an image which is just a JPEG file called UNLV QuickBird multispectral image so let's open it when you open it you will uh, get a message called create pyramids if you do not create this ArcMap will continue to ask you until you create these um, so go ahead and click yes pyramids are uh, different versions of the res resolution of this image that will be available for to ArcMap to show you an Im image at different uh, scales. After this you will see another dialog box saying unknown spatial reference which makes sense because that's what missing in this image and we need to provide ArcMap with the information about the spatial reference of this image. So uh, this is just warning click OK and something I would like you to notice is that as you move the mouse around look at the location in the dialog bo uh, in the status bar you will see that although you're seeing numbers or location coordinates in the uh, in the map uh, current frame uh, showing but the units and where it actually belongs are unknown and this is what we need to adjust for this image so first of all uh, let's talk about uh, another toolbar that you'll be using today. It's called georeferencing toolbar. Um, so go ahead and turn it on, and you will see that it appears and it has georeferencing. And the image that is selected is uh, the JPEG file that you just opened. And there are a few other options: add control points, which we talked about in the previous lecture. And this is the table of all the control points that you will add. So this is what we're going to do uh, today and try to georeference this image. One side note about the image. If you right click in the table of contents on the image that you have just opened and looked at its properties, you will see that um, in the source the description of the image is provided and the cell size is 1 to 1 which is pixels and so and the size of the image is provided but if you go scroll down and looked at the uh, spatial information it's just providing that information in terms of the um, size of the picture but uh, image but there is no spatial reference and we will compare this with after uh, georeferencing and you will see that the information will appear based upon how you georeference it also if you go look at the symbology you will see that this image has three bands and that um, maybe you should be aware of this that any colored image typically has three bands but there can be more bands in case of uh, certain satellite imagery but at any single time you can only associate one band per uh, red green and blue channels so in this case since there are only three bands they are given to red green and blue and that's why you see the colored image uh, try playing with this turning off one of the bands and seeing how the and applying it and seeing how the image looks like okay so the other information that you have been given in that folder is ground control points so here is a map that you just should see in your um, lab for data folder this is the points where we know the location so for example uh, uh, if you look at the PDF file which is given along with this image that contains the list of all of these points for example point number four in the top left corner is uh, Mr. Be Mr. Beijing Chinese restaurant and it's the southwest corner of that restaurant and its coordinates are in terms of longitude and latitude are given. 
In a similar manner, all the other points are listed in this PDF file and they are described uh, what is the name of that location and what are the latitude and longitude coordinates. So we would need this information to uh, georeference the image. In other words, simply saying, um, knowing some of the known locations in the image, we will try to uh, georeference the whole image uh, using uh, georeferencing techniques. So let's add a point, uh, a ground control point or GCP to this image. And I'm going to add Flamingo Swenson intersection southeast corner just so that you want to know where that is. If you look at your printed map, it's uh, a point um, right here and you can see it's the southeast corner. So I'm going to move this image away and the table, this is from where the latitude and longitude values will be uh, entered into the georeferencing process. So in your image, zoom in to the Flamingo and Swenson intersection and you can see it is pixelated because it's a, a, a relatively uh, lower resolution image uh, and so in order to have a better feel of that point on the image you can always zoom in or zoom out I think this is a reasonable zoom and I can kind of feel where the southeast corner is and a lot of human factor goes in this part just like uh, uh, we, we learn in digitization. So in georeferencing toolbar click add control point and go to to the best of your ability of your hands and your perception go to the southeast corner of Flamingo Swenson intersection and click. Now once you click the pointer will change um, and you can select a second point if you are doing uh, image registration since in this case we are doing georeferencing, all you have to do is just uh, right click to enter XY value. So if you right click, you will see input XY data. And if you click that, you will see that it opens up uh, a window for you to enter X and Y value. X is the longitude value from your table for this uh, GCP or ground control point, which is that value and Y is the latitude value which is 36.114533 now once you click OK you will see that the image will move uh, because it's doing the georeferencing on the go so it has based upon one ground control point it has tried to adjust your image uh, to the best of uh, its ability and this is how we're going to enter more points OK so let's add another point so what looks interesting so point number 12 I'm gonna add that one you can add any of these points as you like I'm gonna add in and out burger north east corner so make sure you remember which corner we're talking about so I'm gonna uh, pan to in and out burger you can always zoom out if uh, it's a little confusing. You can always zoom out to get a clear uh, idea of where you need to go. So as you can see that um, looks like in and out Burger is this is Student Union, this is Greenspun, so there, right there is the in and out Burger. So I'm going to zoom accordingly. Maybe zoom out a little bit so I can see the northeast corner uh, in a better way and now again I'm gonna click add control point and go to the northeast corner of in and out burger click it and then right click input XY value X for this point is point minus one one five point one three seven four six zero and y value is thirty six point one zero four one four five okay so once you have that you click OK and your image is gone uh, this is because the 
georeferencing is happening on the go. So you can always go back to your table of contents, right click the image and click zoom to layer which means go to wherever this image is and see how it has changed its, its orientation based upon what you gave it and if you go and hover on any point you can see below uh, in the points uh, in the coordinates that it is showing the values that you entered and it has kind of warped or rotated the image to make sure that these control points have those coordinates that you entered. So I just added one more point uh, at Thomas and Mac Drive Paradise Intersection southeast corner which is point number 18 on your map and look how it actually crunched or compressed the image vert vertically a little bit to uh, show to, to match these points. Now there's a, another uh, button in the georeferencing toolbar called view link table if you click that you can see the points that you have added so we have added three points and they are showing here and each point source coordinates are also shown as well as the coordinates that you entered uh, to uh, show the latitude longitude values are also shown and this is showing the error after the transformation has been done. You should see that it is zero, which means I have done a pretty good job. But if you are off, you will see some numbers. And as we add more points, you will see that it will start to uh, show some errors. Now, in the class, we talked about uh, what kind of uh, transformations you can do. And if you pull this down, it's only showing one first order polynomial, which is a fine uh, transformation. As you mo add more control points, you will see more options appear in this. Um, also, uh, notice that the auto adjust is already checked. If you uncheck this, it will stop updating the image transformation on the go, which is happening right now. And last but not least, this is um, you can load and save these control points so that you don't have to enter these control points every time. Uh, turns out this process is pretty tedious, just like digitization. So uh, two important things. One is be careful when you're doing this process. Uh, make sure you're paying attention because if you cause one error, uh, you may not know. Um, although the res residual errors will tell you which point is the worst and you can always uh, select it and delete it um, and we'll, we'll talk about that more so I'm going to add a few more points uh, to kind of show uh, where we go from the uh, from here uh, one one point uh, remember in the class we talked about that if you divide your image into four quadrants each quadrant should have a few points to get uh, a good uh, transformation